Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ginger Broderick, and I'm the host of the Ginger New York TV show. We are here live at m and TV Studios every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. m and Studios are on West 59th Street in New York City, and we are live here today, as well as live streaming all around the world. Today is January 2nd, 2015, and that means it's our first show of 2000. 15. It's our New Year's show. We have a rock and roll doctor in for you today. She's a new author called The Rockstar Remedy. How appropriate for being a rock star doctor. Her name is Dr. Gabriel Francis, and here she is today. Hi, Ginger. Thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you. And thank you, Mickey Pantana, for connecting us. Yes, Mickey is a photographer, professional photographer, and she's been here for Ginger New York, and she's on the set. There she is, waving back to us. <laughs> and thank you, MNN, too. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm very grateful that we have an opportunity to do a weekly show, and um, thank you for coming in and opening us for 2015. Uh, it's fun. Thank and you. so appropriate, you have a new book out, The Rockstar Remedy. Yes, I do. Do you love that cover? Love it. Smoothies Gone Wild. Wonderful. Yeah, the artistic director, I was like, wow, he got it. <laughs> I'm on a 30-day green smoothie oh. challenge right now. And, uh, and so appropriate for you to be in here because I woke up this morning with super puffy eyes that I have to wear my glasses so that nobody can see it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so amazing that, you know, something like that... Uh, I, I know that, you know, with the holidays I've been out, I haven't been hydrating, you know, I might have an extra glass of wine or two than I normally do, and poof, once I get back on my regular regime, yeah, you know, um, it's it, it puffed out. Well, do you know the reason why you got puffy? No. The reason people swell up and get puffy is because the body, body is uh, retaining water as a way of diluting toxin. Oh, isn't that interesting? Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a protective mechanism mm -hmm. by your body. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's happening because you're detoxing too fast. So oh. when you're drinking green juices, mm -hmm. the do you know what makes the plant green? Mm -mm. Okay, chlorophyll. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So chlorophyll is the blood and the immune system of the plant. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what chlorophyll does is it goes inside of our cells, binds to toxins and heavy metals, and pulls them out. Mm -hmm. It pulls it from the cells and into the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. Okay. But once it's in the blood, it has to be filtered through the liver and the gut to be eliminated. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people are taking green juices and it's chelating and taking these toxins out of the cells, but the body can't eliminate it through the liver and the gut because they're too toxic. Oh, isn't that amazing? Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I told you a little bit about the detox that's in my book, mm -hmm. and what it's designed to do is to support the liver and the gut so that they're able to detox properly, and then the green things won't make mm -hmm. you swell up. <laughs> That's interesting. And you know so much about this because you're a chiropractor and you're an acupuncturist. You're a holistic doctor. Yes. You're everything. Yes. And I'm, um, I'm involved with yoga teacher training, so I'm taking some anatomy and physiology classes. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's a lot of big words. Congratulations <laughs> for you to like devote your whole life to it. But it's really interesting learning about the body. Yeah. Is I it? Mean, I went to medical school for 17 years. That's amazing. Yeah. God, a lot God of people bless. don't realize that these alternative fields are, are actually real medical programs. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to have the basic sciences, the pre-med, and then the medical program where we're learning the pathology, the physiology, mm -hmm. and then the treatment. The treatment becomes different than the medical root path, mm -hmm. okay? But the actual basic sciences and all that are the same. Interesting. Um, do people tell you you don't look like a doctor? Uh, yes, yes, and I take that as a compliment. <laughs> and that's probably why you're so cool and get to hang around with rock stars. I yeah. know we can't discuss who they are for yes. confidentiality reasons, but you do have a mention of a few people that did some testimonies for your book. Well, we, we, we interviewed about 70 artists in the book. Uh -huh. I hired some journalists to uh -huh. help me, and so we got 70 artists to tell their stories and mm -hmm. to promote what they do about health because... My purpose in writing this book was I wanted to take the message of health to a totally different audience. Mm -hmm. 
And I thought, what, what better ambassador than these rock stars? Right. Because a lot of people don't realize what they're doing backstage is actually a lot of really healthy stuff and that that's why some of them are still touring when they're in their 70s. Mm -hmm. And these are people that a lot of people really admire. Mm -hmm. And these people that admire them are people that like to party and celebrate. Mm -hmm. And maybe they've been intimidated about getting healthy because they thought, well, that means I can't have fun in life, right. you know? Mm -hmm. But the rock stars are doing both. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I, the angle I come at from this book. Mm -hmm. It's a health book for people who like to enjoy life and celebrate, mm -hmm. showing you that you can, you know, you can basically have your shake and eat cake too, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> but not all the time, or is it a 50 50 not split? All the time, yeah. <laughs> you, you have a principle of 90 10. Yeah. principle in your book. Can you explain about that? Yes, I believe, you know, one of the things I learned with these rock stars is you have to have little tricks to keep things going, you know, mm -hmm. because they're not going to give up all of the fun in their life. Um, so many health plans are so limiting and mm -hmm. so restrictive that people think if I can't be 100% perfect, I'm not going to do it at all, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to do all the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. So the 90-10 rule is 90% of the time you mm -hmm. do all these great healthy things, 10% of the time you do whatever you want. And the, the, the key is that during that 10% of the time, you don't feel guilty. Mm. Great. <laughs> okay. It sounds good. It sounds fun. That's and then you have something like the detox shake or other remedies that uh, during that 10% of the time when you're kind of polluting yourself and mm -hmm. adding toxins to your body, you have a way of resetting that and clearing it out. Mm -hmm. Because over time, it's those little things that build up over time that tend to cause disease. Interesting. You know? mm -hmm. Can you tell us some of the things uh, you, you brought in some... Um, products here. Could yeah, you tell so, us a little bit about it? Yeah, so this this is stuff that I have people put into a smoothie. Some of my patients call me the smoothie doctor mm -hmm. because I like to deliver nutrients in food-based form as much mm -hmm. as possible. Mm -hmm. um, this is what we call a functional food that's designed to support the liver and its ability to detox. So mm -hmm. it has all the nutrients that the liver needs to detox. Interesting. This is a fiber. So fiber basically is like the street cleaner. It it goes down the street and scrapes the sludge off the side of the walls of the intestine, mm -hmm. okay? We've got a green food, which I talked about before, and that kind of chelates the heavy metals and toxins out of our cells, and it's a blood purifier. Mm -hmm. And then this has like 20 different green foods all in one tablespoon. Now, would you add that to a green juice that you're making at home? You can it, do, you can add it for more. Okay. Or you can use it instead. Okay. You know, and these are all organic products. Uh huh. And then this is a probiotic, the good bacteria that okay. we all, and this really helps to build up the immune system. But the probiotic lines the digestive tract, the mm -hmm. immune lining goes all the way through our tube there, mm -hmm. and it prevents viruses and bacteria from being able to adhere. Mm -hmm. So probiotics are extremely important for gut and immune health. And then I use flax oil as an omega-3. Mm -hmm. So all of this goes into a morning smoothie, and it's a meal replacement for breakfast. Mm -hmm. And then you're eating healthy food throughout the day. A meal replacement for breakfast as opposed to having it for lunch or dinner? Why do you, you select could breakfast? Have it, you could have it any time of the day, really. Mm -hmm. But most people, I find, skip breakfast the most. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is very energizing. Mm -hmm. So I tend to have people do it in the morning for breakfast. Plus, if you set if you set off your day uh, feeling really clean and good, uh -huh. you're more likely to kind of choose healthier options the rest of the day. Right, no Doritos or something like that. Cause you, yeah. yeah, if you start with a scone, you're going to end with pizza. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you start with a smoothie, you might end with An like apple? Or <laughs> kale and salmon oh, or something. I studied a lot of uh, raw foods. I, ha I do Bikram yoga, and one of the teachers suggested having a green smoothie every day. And she reduced her diabetic medication by 90% by doing wow. Bikram five times a week. So it's that incredible. started me reading and exploring and trying and such. And it's it's a shift, but um, what they recommend is getting all that good stuff in your system at the beginning of the day uh -huh. ju for just like what you mentioned. And then sometimes I don't do that. I want eggs and bacon and cheese and stuff, mm -hmm. and then I'm and just... that's a great breakfast, actually. Oh, good. You know, something like that with the eggs really uh -huh. helps to stabilize the blood sugar. Okay. 
if you start the day with pancakes, you're going to be eating sugar all day. Mm -hmm. Okay, but if you start the day with some kind of protein, uh -huh. you're probably going to eat healthier throughout the day. That's really great. Mm -hmm. Well, it's so exciting to have you here. Thank you. It's exciting to be here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when you, you, you have a, a patient base. Now, you go on tour with rock stars, uh -huh. rock bands. Mm -hmm. like some I serious. used to do a lot more. Now uh -huh. they're smaller, and a lot of the artists come to me, mm -hmm. and I work on them in venues when they're in New York City. That's great. Yeah. How exciting. So I've been working in the music business for 30 years. Good for you. I started when I was 19. Oh, how fun. And that was a great <laughs> time, too. Uh-huh. Or in the it last 30 years. It was a a different music business yeah. then, mm -hmm. yeah. It was a lot more fun then. I moved into New York 1981, and Madonna was just coming out at that time. Yeah. <laughs> and it's really interesting. You've never heard, I've never heard of anything of, like, her going to a rehab or anything like that. And no, she's a she's dancer. she's really yeah. healthy, isn't yeah. she? Yeah. yeah. And she looks great because of it, you mm -hmm. know? She's very tiny. I got to go to her red carpet premiere of uh, Wii, the uh -huh. movie Wii. And um, she's just someone that I, I enjoy, I admire. Is it difficult working with people um, in the music industry and then switching over to like an accountant like myself? <laughs> Is <laughs> you it mean different going person? from rock stars to normal people? Yeah. Is it difficult to No, I actually feel like what we consider normal, uh -huh. everybody's living the way these rock stars are living now. And that's really what the book is about. It's like we're all overstretched beyond capacity. We're all living these very intense lifestyles. Think about a corporate business traveler or somebody who's working 12 to 14 hours a day mm -hmm. in front of a computer. Like mm -hmm. how much time do they have to take care of themselves? Or a mother with a couple kids mm -hmm. that's ch taking them all around different places. She puts herself last. She doesn't have any time to take care of herself. So all of these very extreme intense lifestyles are the same things that I would have to deal with when a, when a rock star is on tour. Mm -hmm. So you're on tour and you're off tour. And you know, I see this uh, people doing this every day in their regular life. They're like, okay, I've got this much work, I'm gonna do this, but then in three weeks when this is over, I'm gonna do healthy stuff, mm -hmm. okay? So that busy time is on tour, mm -hmm. and that month where they have downtime is off tour. Mm -hmm. And there's different things you can do in both of those places to make your life healthier. You don't have to just do it that one month of downtime, mm -hmm. okay? There's things you can do in everyday life to make it healthier. So, you know, in my book, I give all those kind of little tidbits and advice. Mm -hmm. You know, wake up with the smoothie instead of not eating. Um, I have tips for if you're eating out, how to make that healthier, how mm -hmm. to make healthier choices in restaurants how to eat healthy in gas stations and airports when you're how traveling. How do you do that? You know? I mean, there's McDonald's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, but there's also a lot of really healthy stuff out there now, uh -huh. you know? Uh -huh. And so all of those little tips um, are things that I actually learned with the musicians, but I incorporate into my r regular practice. I feel like we're all living that way, mm -hmm. you know? Well, I work with a lot of those corporate executives who travel all over the country. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have one who, who who takes the red eye flights. I mean, he'll go out on midnight and he'll go all through the whole day and then come back the same night. And that might be going to California and back. I mean, he can be up for 25 hours. Yeah. You know? And the reality mm -hmm. that somebody's going to change their lifestyle mm -hmm. to get healthy, mm -hmm. that might last a month or two. So what I want to do is take someone's lifestyle the way it is and make it healthier from there. Oh, interesting. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because most people, if they do say they're going to change their lifestyle, not everybody can be on that 9 to 5 rhythm mm -hmm. and exercise for an hour every day and do this and that. So why not just take where you're at mm -hmm. and make it healthier and improve the quality of it? So with uh, starting the new year, everybody's making resolutions, New uh -huh. Year resolutions, and someone posted on Facebook, um, on January 1st, she said, I've already broken my rule, you know? <laughs> yes, so they set you... themselves up for failure. Okay. You know? Do you have any uh, suggestions or advice for people on, on making New Year's resolutions? Somebody said he makes 30 of them because at least one will stick, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so my, I'm starting out with a green smoothie every day for there you go. 30 days. I wrote an article for... Um, a magazine called Aloha, mm -hmm. and I came up with uh, 11 New Year's resolutions uh -huh. that were inspired by the Beatles songs. Oh, fun. Do you want to pick a yes. Beatles song that you yes. love? 
Oh, what? I love them all. And in fact, my guest next week um, recorded see. with John Lennon oh. in 1974, and he rearranged a lot of his songs in an a early jazz style. So <laughs> that's debuting out um, earlier this year or later this year. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really exciting. But um, what what do you all have? All right. So for example, <laughs> Shake It Up, Baby. Okay. Start you know, I went today with the smoothie. Hey. Okay. And which one? Which uh, Beatles song do you think goes with yoga? I'll let it be. Let it be goes with meditation. Oh, yoga, interesting. For sure. Hey, and how Jude. about Twist and Shout? Oh, you know, Yay. I follow the Fab Four. I saw <laughs> them on New Year's Eve at City Winery, and they played all a lot of the early Beatles music. And Aww. it was like all of us were. They did Twist and Shout, Ticket to Ride. You know, yeah. it was a lot of those great t tunes. My favorite one is Day Tripper. Oh, wow. So I think that everybody should have one day a week that they just don't have anything scheduled and just let the day flow because it really helps open them up for creativity mm -hmm. and clearing and um, what I like to do is I take a spontaneous adventure so I might mark out like four or five hours where I get on a train and I don't know where I'm going to end up going oh, wow. or I just take a walk in a neighborhood because in New York just walking is an adventure mm -hmm. and you never know what's going to happen you don't have to leave the country you know, to have an adventure, so. You know how I learned the words to Day Tripper? <laughs> Back in the day when we had 45s, I actually put the needle on the 45 throughout the whole song and writing it down. And that's how I learned a tripper. <laughs> and of course, I love the tax man. You know, that's... Oh, yeah, because yeah. you're an accountant. Right. Uh-huh. So that's great. Well, I think, I think that health and the idea of getting healthy has to be fun for people. Mm -hmm. And it should be. It's... It's really, you know, health, life, it's all a celebration. Mm -hmm. Eating is a celebration, it, you know, that we should include um, space in our life to enjoy. We shouldn't make our life so rigid, mm -hmm. um, and especially, like, getting healthy. That can be something that's enjoyable and celebrated, too. So, you know, The Rockstar Remedy is a book that's very fun to read. Mm -hmm. And it really encourages people to celebrate life as well and not be so strict and puritanical on themselves. Mm -hmm. Where do people find you or how do they get um, the book? The book is in all the major outlets, all the big bookstores. And it just released this week? Yes. How exciting. January. Oh, no, I'm sorry, December 31st. 31st uh -huh. So it was Wednesday. Mm -hmm. What a great way to end the year and start the year. Yeah, the new year, new you. Uh-huh, mm -hmm. wonderful. I'm not sure if I um, got the answer on what I was looking for for the New Year's resolution. Do you suggest just one, or do you suggest 30, or? I don't really make what a happens? specific okay. suggestion, except okay. maybe, I, you know, sometimes I'll talk to people about what their resolution is. Okay. And if it seems like it's too rigid, I'll say, you know, that's wonderful, and give yourself space to not be perfect. Okay. Because if you don't, you're more likely to sabotage it completely if you miss up. Well, I used to be a sugar addict. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mother, for turning <laughs> on to my sugar. That and, was a confession, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, um, and it took me six years of trying to get away from sugar. I mean, to not eat it in the morning, like with donuts and coffee. I mean, it's really incredible. And uh, the more you get away from it, um, and then I said, I'm never having sugar again. And then, of course, you know, after a month, you know, then you binge. <laughs> like, or, how realistic is that? Right. I'm never having it again, <laughs> right? Or somebody mentioned that he stopped drinking for about two months, but then he went back to having mm -hmm. a little bit, you know, for the holidays and such. Mm -hmm. And I know that, um, that uh, you know, a couple glasses of wine did it for me over the holidays because I'm, I'm pretty good, you know, because I do Bikram and such. And it was so amazing that I woke up with such puffy eyes. And I thought, well, you know what? I always tell tell people that these setbacks mm -hmm. are really part of the process mm -hmm. because I think that healing is kind of like a pilgrimage that it goes along a path. We don't just arrive at a destination and then it's over. Mm -hmm. We go forward, we go back, we take little tangents. It's all part of the learning process. Mm -hmm. But these setbacks are great reminders of why you want to stick with the other stuff. Okay, because okay? you're going to feel different. Yeah, you right. know, when people cheat and they come to me and go, oh, I went off my diet and the, and I drank this and I ate this and I feel so horrible. And, and But then it makes, it, um, makes them see how it's worth it to mm -hmm. eat healthy, to buy organic food, to take their shake. They realize, like, how good they were feeling. Mm -hmm. Okay, because they cheated and they had that reminder. So it's just all part of the process. You pick yourself up, 
you get back on the saddle, you know? Uh, that's really great, not give yourself such a hard time, because uh, certainly everybody else is going to. I mean, I posted a photo and someone said, oh my God, you know, you got to get your <laughs> hair down, your parts off, and, you oh, know, and no. it's like, gosh, don't beat me up. So man. they're going to run with the puffy eyes <laughs> then, huh? <laughs> one, one of the things um, that I'm hearing when I talk to raw foodies or, you know, people who promote a raw food lifestyle is that they don't feel that a body needs protein. What's your take on that? I totally disagree with that. Mm -hmm. um, I think the protein is anabolic, so it builds us up, mm -hmm. okay? And if we don't get enough protein in the diet, then the body will utilize proteins that it al already has, okay? So it'll start to break down muscle and other tissues to mm -hmm. access the protein because we need the amino acids from proteins for all of our metabolic processes. Mm -hmm. So we do need protein. And um, if you're a vegetarian or vegan, there's ways to get all the amino acids, but it's difficult to get them as a vegan or a vegetarian. I've been a vegetarian for 30 years. Good for but you. you have to really work at it, mm -hmm. you know, to keep yourself healthier as a vegetarian. And then there's different diets for different people. Like some people might really thrive on a raw food diet and some people might not. So I don't believe there's just one perfect diet for everybody. Mm -hmm. But I do believe we get so many benefits from raw foods. Mm -hmm. But 100% raw is not something that I t usually promote. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Because I follow some people who are so like fruitarians. Uh -huh. and, and then I think, oh my gosh, all that sugar on their body. Right. You know, and then mm -hmm. some people are all, you know, on the, on the veggie side, mm -hmm. you know. And as much as my body craves that fruit, fruit um, smoothie, um, I, I'm concerned about it uh, on the insulin impact on my body right. over a long period yeah, of time. Yeah, like this smoothie has 20 grams of protein in it. Oh, okay. 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 It's a vegetarian protein. It's mm -hmm. rice based, but you can, you have to start the day, I believe, with uh -huh. protein because it stabilizes your blood sugar. Okay. These blood sugar dysregulations are what we're finding is causing a lot of inflammatory syndromes in people. Mm, okay. Interesting. So we know that the balancing the blood sugar is very important, but the protein is beneficial for all of our metabolic processes mm -hmm. and building, mm -hmm. building, you know? Now you're a chiropractor as well. Can mm -hmm. you t give us a few uh, tips on how to select a chiropractor? Um, I fell doing the splits when I was in my 20s mm -hmm. and I threw off all my bones and mm -hmm. I went to many chiropractors before I found one that worked exclusively with the neck that Fix me. Oh, great. Yeah. So, so, but how I does somebody know? I think the best know? way to find a chiropractor is through referral mm -hmm. and word of mouth through somebody that you know who had a really good experience with a chiropractor. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm considered a um, mixed chiropractor, so I include soft tissue, physical therapy, nutrition, diet, lifestyle all into the manual manipulation and adjustment. I don't just do the adjustments. Okay. Um, but there's different philosophies of chiropractic mm -hmm. that tend to kind of suit different people and their oh, personalities. Right. Uh -huh. So I find that talking to people and hearing what they, mm -hmm. you know, are experiencing with any kind of holistic doctor, whether it's acupuncturist, massage, chiropractic, naturopathic, mm -hmm. you know, having, knowing someone who had a good experience and you're wanting some kind of similar experience, mm -hmm. that's always a safe thing to do. Well, you're very well educated. When I was reading your bio, I was like, oh my gosh, when does her education stop? Exactly. It doesn't. I'm still going. Wow. <laughs> and, it's, and it's so exciting. I mean, just for me to learn about raw foods was really great and, and the importance of organic food, yeah. you know, versus the stuff that's um, genetic, genetically modified. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm, I'm challenged with some words. So. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I really give you a lot of credit to be so involved, you know, in, in health and wellness. And, and I know the, the studying and the courses that you've taken over your lifetime are, you know, require a lot of discipline. And well, it's been a lifetime of studying. You know, uh -huh. it, I was in you know medical school for 17 years, mm -hmm. and then after I got out of the traditional medical school, is when I started to do the touring with the bands. Mm -hmm. And during that time, when I wasn't on tour, I would go to these different countries and study 
medicine in those countries oh, okay. with some of the indigenous healers. Interesting. And that's when I learned a lot of some of the other techniques that I've incorporated into my practice mm -hmm. that are from traditional healing systems. Mm -hmm. And that's something that every time I travel, uh -huh. first thing I do is go, where's the music? Where are the healers? <laughs> you know, and sometimes they're the same, which is also very cool. But I'm always still trying to learn more new things. And we have a couple of minutes left. And uh, one of the New Year's resolutions you mentioned was focused on the Beatles song was focused on meditation. Yeah. What, what do you think about meditation? I think uh, meditation is life changing. Mm -hmm. You know, for me it has been. And there's so many different types of meditation. Mm -hmm like for different people. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that clearing your mind and creating space and resetting your nervous system, mm -hmm. it's, it's really essential for, for everybody. And it doesn't have to, you don't have to change your religion to meditate. Mm -hmm. you know? I'm learning it through my yoga teacher training. And um, I, I'm just not one that can sit still. I can do moving meditation like with right. yoga. But um, once I started learning the techniques of meditation it was really interesting on the changes it made in my life I mean we even have somebody who's a meditation trainer um, and uh, who's certified in it who leads groups and such and works with cancer patients and things like that uh, oh, that's and helping wonderful. help reduce the stress and then keep um, your life peaceful and not let those stressor people get into yeah, your life. Yeah, it can really you know? rewire your nervous system, yeah. honestly. Wow. Yeah, and there's tons of research on how it affects your immune system, your mm -hmm. nervous system, your hormones. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. Well, it's really great to have you in. Any last words, piece of advice that you might want to offer oh. our readers? Well, I think that everybody should have a very healthy and prosperous New Year and make sure you uh, have lots of time for celebration. Oh, that's <laughs> really great. And again, tell us how we can find you. Mm -hmm. um, you can find me. My um, practice is um, at 137 Grand Street in Soho, New York, and theurbanalchemist.com. And there's also a website for my new book called therockstarremedy.com. That's really great. I love the name, Urban Alchemist. Urban, H-E-R-B-A-N. Urban. Urban. Not herbal, but urban. Yeah, play on the words. You yeah, know, it's New wonderful. York and, it's yeah. herbs and urban and <laughs> <laughs> all that. <laughs> all this stuff, all a lot of creativity. So thank you so much. Thank very much. You. Dr. G, wonderful. Dr. Francis, yeah. Dr. Gabriel Francis, thank you for coming in today. Thank, thank you, Mickey, for being here. My, my director, Josiane Hurd. I want to thank you very much for joining in to Ginger New York TV show. We are here live every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. I want to wish you a very happy new year and a healthy one. <laughs> and you know what? Get Dr. Francis's new book, The Rockstar Remedy. Yes, buy yes. My book. yes. <laughs> and learn all the healthy tips to be healthy and wealthy and wise. Thank you thank so you. much. Uh huh. Wonderful. Thank, thank you. you. Good night, everyone. We'll see you next week. <laughs>